Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to CAR Entertainment. I am your host, Dylan Hamilton, and ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be moving on to our A2 revision videos, I guess. Uh, we're going to start by doing it off with biology, but we'll also be bringing you digital technology and business studies videos. It's going to be in the same format as our biology AS revisions, where we're going to go through our PowerPoints we have made for it, uh, basically. So today we're going to go over homeostasis and kidney, two different PowerPoints, but you won't notice. We'll just uh, switch for it for the magic of editing. But we're going to start off with uh, A21, which is homeostasis here. Uh, let's get straight into this. So homeostasis part one. Now the key parts are actually going to be white, and then your head, as you'll see, will be in yellow. The bits in blue uh, aren't necessarily the what you need to know most. This has changed throughout the creation of the PowerPoint. They have become the yellow to highlight it and then this sort of like darkish blue will be the main thing and sometimes it's purple. Um, but I'll let you know whenever we get through that. So basically, just follow through. Just You can take down everything if you need to. So, homeostasis part one. Uh, mammalian tissue is a collection of cells bathed in extracellular fluid. That's called tissue fluid. Homeostasis uh, is, has a composition of this fluid kept constant. These fluids can range from water, ion, temperature, pH, and O2. So essentially what homeostasis says, it is the maintenance of constant or steady state conditions within the body. That is the definition. Learn it off. You'll be thankful for it. So homeostasis has these receptors that show the departure from normal levels. So for example, in humans, our temperature is 37 degrees. If it reaches to like 45 degrees, for example, you have a fever, uh, the receptors will show this. And then the corrective mechanism will cool your body down, for example, sweating. And that will bring you back down to your normal temperature. But negative feedback will have to occur. Because whenever your factor returns, for example, when your body returns to 37 degrees again, you don't want it to go below that and go down to maybe 33, 32 degrees. You want it to stay at 37. So then you have this negative feedback which causes these corrective measures to be turned off, which prevents this overcorrection. So homeostatic control is essential for providing the optimum conditions for enzyme reactions in terms of pH and temperature, and they also avoid osmotic problems. Now let's move on to the kidney. So here we are now for the kidney. As you see, it's a wee bit dark green as well. So we're just going to go straight on there. Uh, you see, we have the purple. So kidney functions. The kidney has two important fun uh, functions, which are excretion and osmoregulation. But we're going to get through these. For example, excretion actually has two different things of fun it, uh, but we'll get into that. So excretion is just essentially the removal of toxic waste from the metabolism. The main product excreted is urea, which is produced in the breakdown of excess amino acids. All our toxic products include creatinine, which is produced from a breakdown of creatine phosphate. And then the second function is osmoregulation, which is the control of water potential of body fluids, as the kidney regulates water potential of the blood capillary volume and concentration where urine is produced. So you can see how homeostasis ties into that, the control of water potential of body fluids. So let's just talk through the structure of the urinary system. So blood will flow through the aorta, which is from the heart, uh, and then goes to the renal artery and reach the kidney. Now, it'll have to high, have a high pressure, and this is required for filtration, and we'll go through this as well when we talk about ultrafiltration. The kidney will keep its useful products and eliminate its extricatory products. The filtered blood will leave the kidney via the renal vein, okay, so whenever it's went through the kidney and the nephron, etc., it'll leave for the renal vein, but the extratory products will pass into the ureter, its urine, and this will be taken to the bladder for storage, and sphincter muscles will control the release of urine as it exits through the urethra. So that's just a very simple thing. Um, now, there's two different parts that you'll need to know in the kidney and nephron. The nephron is basically just the millions of these little things called nephrons inside the kidney, where, is what, uh, where your uh, osmoregulation, ultrafiltration, and reabsorption will take place. Ultrafiltration and reabsorption are the two things that come under excretion, really. So, the cortex, which is the outer dark region, which is under the thin chlorine layer, and you have the medulla. The middle of it should be in yellow, I'll be honest. So this is your inner lighter region, which is subdivided into pyramids and apices that extend out into the pelvis region. Now, you'll be able to clearly distinguish this from the diagram because cortex on the outside, medulla is on the inside. Now, your structure of the nephron. So a nephron is an individual filter. They originate and end in the cortex. So they start in the cortex, end in the cortex, but they have this feature called the loop of Henle, which extends down into the medulla. Now the nephron will join a collecting duct in the cortex and this will extend once again down through the medulla. Now, the structure of the nephron. The nephron will originate as a Bowman's capsule and each Bowman capsule is supplied with blood from the afferent arterial. That's important. Afferent going to. Now it will leave through the efferent arterial. So afferent to, efferent out. Now within this cup or uh, Bowman's capsule is a knot of capillaries called the glomerulus. 
As you leave the Bowman's capsule, the efferent capillary will branch forming a vaso recta, and this will remain closely associated with the nephron, which is very important for later on when we talk about reabsorption. Now, your Bowman's capsule will extend into the proximal convoluted tubule. So it goes Bowman's capsule, then your proximal convoluted tubule. This will extend into the loop of Henle, which dips into the medulla, like we just said, and this descending part is called the descending limb. It will then bend sharply, like a hairpin, and then it will return back up, called the ascending limb, to reach the cortex. Then it will join the distal convoluted tubule, distal meaning two, it's a second one, where it will then flow and join the collecting duct, which will be the converging, which will converge the base of the pelvis, emptying the contents into the ureter, taking urine to the blood. Ladies and gentlemen, that's basically what we're going to do for the day. That's homeostasis and kidneys. If you come back later on, you'll see the videos go up. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, all that there, Jazz, and then you'll see the videos uh, going up there. And if you just subscribe to the channel as well, you'll be able to see them. Click the notification bell for whenever we do release a video. Good luck with your biology. Hopefully, we get through all of our A2 stuff in good, in good time. Uh, try and get them for one third mark, depending on when you have them. Uh, but hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. We will. You probably left it off on a wee bit of a tangent here in terms of the the nephron, the kidney and homeostasis, but we will go further and we'll talk about reabsorption, ultrafiltration and osmoregulation. Uh, so just be a little patient with us and we'll get those out to you as quickly as we possibly can. I've been Dylan from CR Entertainment and I'll see you next time.